This is what we'll be creating in today's episode. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another Blender tutorial. It's been far too long since my last one. I have also not been uploading drone videos, unfortunately, that thing. I'm very busy and COVID is everyone's at home. So today I'm going to be creating a, just a quick little scene. Uh, you guys might be able to appreciate this. I will pull up a reference. Here we go. So this is my little art style, which we're going to be doing today. It's obviously animatable. So as you can see, I have got a little animation going. You guys can animate it. You guys can just use it as a image. As you can see, I, I do have my desktop background set as one of these textures. Very cool texture. You can use it for any 3D illustration, um, logos, whatever. And it's totally procedural. So you guys are going to be learning about that as well today. And so uh, why don't we get right into it? Uh, we start uh, by deleting the default cube. Isn't that isn't that common to all tutorials all right guys um you could actually use a default cube well you don't need to delete the default cube actually let's get let's give the default cube some love today all right so we're gonna scale it up a bit just because i like to have a bit of just because i like to have a bit of uh you know space to work with here um now what i'd recommend is just um moving the camera so i like to reset the z and then I'll just uh, move it back and move it over a bit like this. And then I'll set this to Z. Actually, set this to 90. And bring it down. Oops, bring it down. And then you can set it as active camera. I don't have a numpad on my keyboard, so bear with me on that. And you can scale up the cube to take up the whole screen or just make it bigger. I, li I, I like to do it a sort of, not stupid way, but uh, a sort of, how do you say a basic way i like to do it here we go oh yeah there we go so we've got the cube here i made it a bit flat um you can delete this light um if you are if you are including the section in a scene which i have done before uh, i i might pull i might pull an image of that on on the screen i'll show you guys um you can you can make it like you can actually apply this uh, texture on any object so it's quite easy to to use uh, for anything right so uh we're gonna start uh by creating the base texture so we're going we're going to go to shading takes a second um now i do like to use cycles for this so if your pc is permitting you to use cycles i always recommend cycles it's a great render engine and make sure if you do have an rtx gpu um here we go i'll pull it up uh system so use optics and you can select your CPU and GPU if you don't have any bottlenecks there. Um, it is the fastest. So uh, use optics. Uh, if you can't, just use um, some different encoding. Uh, there's many videos online on how to get that set up. So uh, yeah, exactly. Don't worry about it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to disconnect this. We're going to move it a bit down. We're going to move this here. And we're going to start by building the whole sort of tree of it all. So what I like to do, I like to add a Musgrave texture. So we're going to be using two, like we're going to use three three textures, which is the principal uh, BSDF, which I have, which is already uh, here. And then we're going to use a Musgrave and we're going to use a Voronoi. And I'll show you how we're going to be using those. So let's just, uh, let's just get these in. Um, you know, as usual, you can just connect the Musgrave into the Voronoi here like this. And, um, then I recommend you get the, I will show you. So uh, for Blender, I always use the node Wrangler. Uh, you just hit, you just, you just take it and it's saved. Uh, if you save this as a project, as the default project, it will always be there. So then all you have to do is just select a node you want to create a mapping of and hit control T and it does this really handy mapping for you. And it's all done already. So you don't need to worry about mapping. And this texture is quite simple um so we're just we're literally just going to put in a color ramp and the color ramp is gonna be like this we're gonna grab the distance from the voronoi which is basically the like mixture of the musgrave and the and the voron like and the voronoi and we're gonna just plug it into here all right we're gonna grab a mix shader and now the mix shader we're going to essentially use the um we're gonna use the texture that we're creating here in combination with a color ramp and this principal shader 
to create one shader, one texture. So essentially you have a lot of adjustability, which is why these procedural textures are so much fun to work with. Now you can use any, you can use, uh, you can use any sort of other shader. You can have another principal shader and you could make like some interesting Damascus seal looking thing. So if you had two metallic textures, one darker and one lighter, you could actually create a Damascus steel texture, which is very cool. Um, you guys should take a look at it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to load up my kernels. And we're going to put in this. We're going to plug this in. We're going to move this down. And we can just grab the BSDF shader. Oops. We can grab the BSDF shader, put it in, plug this. Oops. Plug this into the surface and plug this into the factor. So as you can see, we're using this as the factor for the mix shader. So depending on the different data that we can extract from this shader, we're going to we're going to mix these two shaders together. If you guys can understand that sort of workflow. Hopefully you guys can. So we're gonna maximize this. I just like to make this a simple black. You can make it metallic. I I don't really. Uh, and I like to put the roughness all the way up just so it doesn't reflect. I mean, you can. It does look really cool. Okay, I, I don't think the optics drivers are loading. This is a simple. Yeah. This is Blender. Great, isn't it, guys? <laughs> okay. So Blender is not responding, so I'm gonna bring over my my uh, my my other project, which is the exact same project. You can just see that everything is a bit more spread out. Um, whoops, yeah, I have multiple on one. I was just doing some experimenting. Um, so yeah, we basically have the same setup here. Uh, we just have some values adjusted. As you can see, I did make this one metallic, which is interesting, I guess. Uh, but uh, and I brought the roughness down. And you could actually make it look like gloss, which is very interesting. I mean, you can play around with these. Get some pretty interesting results. Um, essentially, uh, you can ignore this. This this was for the animation I did. I will show you guys how to do that uh, in another video. Uh, but here, um, here, I'll just show you how to mess around with the texture just for your own, you know, sort of thing. So the scale, as you can see, you get some really interesting effects when you play with the scale. Now, this is all creative, guys. So there is no wrong way to do it. Um, literally, you're creating art here. So don't worry. As you can see, you can add more rings. That's with the Musgrave. Um, you can even change the order of these. It won't look the same, but, you know, it, it's art. Do what you want. Um, you know, you, you, you can do a lot, uh, like a real lot. Um, yeah, I like this, so I like the scale. And then I just have this set. So this actually sets the Voronoi scale, which is also very interesting. Uh, you can mess with that. Change the randomness. I like this scale of randomness. And here's the interesting thing. So here is just the, the, the actual texture control. And now we've got the actual, like, here. This is also one of the texture controls. Here, this is the actual color control. And I'll show you guys that in, in, a, in a second. Okay, wait one sec. Okay, here we go. And over here, we can actually adjust the mixing of colors. So here, we, we can invert it. You know, if you bring it close, you get more discrete colors. As you can see. So now, see, this is like more blending them. You know what I mean? So, you know, you, 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 can, you can really have a lot of fun with this. You can, you know, change the strengths. You can do a whole lot with it. Um, yeah, you can you can you know just m mess around, get it really cool, precise, get the exact um, spread and image that you want, which is uh, very important, you know, for your artworks and for your different illustrations. Um, so yeah, here here you here you've got all of the different um, settings. You can all you can mess with all of these, uh, but probably the main one you'd like to mess with is just the color, the roughness, and the metallicness. Um, the color literally can be anything, which is super fun. You have a cool blue, you know, um, there's so many options. Um, and, uh, then you have this mix shader. Obviously I've explained the use of that. And with, with, with this basic tool set here, very easy to create. Literally took me, um, less than 10 minutes 
to to make this texture and this whole scene um you can get some really really cool results and i'll just render a quick image it's that easy here we go it's just gonna load some of the kernels it might take some i'll be back with you once it loads yeah so this is what the render can look like guys i mean this is a one by one image so you'd obviously need to set this to a one by one resolution which very easy to do there we go the camera is now square as you can see if i move it down a bit like this boom you can you can you know get it really precise and you know um you can get an animation like this obviously i'll show you that in another video but you know you've you've got this you've got this really cool looking thing uh, may i add that i did change the world color to black just full black uh with this well you would have a strength of zero it doesn't really matter because it's all black there's no emissiveness emissiveness to it but uh yeah th this is how you create a really cool looking texture in a matter of minutes people find it uh, very visually pleasing and interesting and with this texture you can actually even use it for anything um what i did once i created a displacement map with this texture and i actually made it like a tiered mountain procedurally generated very cool um there's infinite there's infinite uses for this type of thing and um obviously guys experiment with it go ahead it's art there are literally no wrong answers as uh, as long as it's something uh, that you're enjoying doing at the end of the day that's what matters guys so this type of uh, art is is great you know but yeah uh, thank you for watching these are like some very basic skills even with the shading menu in blender some very basic skills that can get you really far when learning about this uh, software suite if you ever get stuck don't don't be afraid to search things up don't be afraid to ask questions you can do it yeah guys hope you enjoyed this video do hit subscribe if you did enjoy the video that does help me greatly especially on this channel thank you for watching once again see you in the next video